today. AMD's new Monster GPU needs how much power? Intel officially announced their Ultra CPUs, AMD's new Little Cores beat Intel's best, and here is AMD's next GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today's video is sponsored by PowerColor. First up for today, if you saw my last video, you know that AMD recently announced a new GPU that's essentially 8 GPUs in one. It's called the MI300X. Remember that this bad boy comes with 153 billion transistors, 304 CUs, and 192 gigabytes of HBM3 memory. I mean, it's one absolute monster. Unfortunately, it looks like it'll need a monster power grid to keep on. While the TDP wasn't advertised big in their slides, it was found in the footnotes later on. And as you can see, it consumes an eye-watering 750 watts. Of course, don't get me wrong, the GPU is an absolute beast, and Nvidia's own H100 TDP gets up to 700 watts, plus Intel's Ponte Vecchio needs at least 600 watts, so this isn't a huge change. And given how absolutely powerful it is, I'm not too surprised, but it's still wild just how much power draw these newer data center GPUs need. I mean, an entire desktop system rarely needs that much power. Then again, this bad boy has over three times the cores when compared to AMD's 7900 XTX, so maybe it's more surprising that it isn't even higher. Next up for today, Intel officially announced their new Ultra branding. But first, if you're ready to customize your GPU, look no further than PowerColor's new Devil Skins made specifically for their Red Devil 7900 series GPUs. They let you personalize the backplate, which gives it this really unique look without adding a bunch of RGB. Plus, if I do say so myself, they look amazing. What's even better is that they use magnets, which means you can swap them out in seconds. So add some style to your new GPU by visiting the link in the description below. Now back to the story. If you remember a little while back, a Meteor Lake CPU was found in a benchmark with a peculiar name. That was called the Core Ultra 5 1003H. Later, Intel confirmed that they were planning to make a branding change in time for their Meteor Lake CPUs. Well, that day is here, as Intel officially announced their new branding, and as the original leak suggested, after 15 years, Intel is officially dropping the I in their core processors. Not only that, but they're adding a new tier of CPUs. You have the Core 3, 5, and 7 processors, and then you have the Core Ultra 5 Ultra Ultra 7 and Ultra 9. As you can see, the more premium offerings don't come in a Core 3 variant. According to The Verge, the company found that Core, instead of the i5, i7, etc., was the main way people associated Intel's products. Of course, Apple definitely makes it harder with their i products, but I'll definitely say there was at least some association with Intel for me. One surprising thing is that according to a fresh new rumor, Intel is apparently not going to use the new branding for their 14th gen desktop CPU. Use. Only their mobile Meteor Lake and mobile Raptor Lake refresh parts will see it. If that's true, it means we likely won't see this new branding until Intel's 15th gen. Next up, the first benchmark for AMD's new flagship Bergamo CPU has just been found. It's a V-Ray benchmark, and it's of AMD's new 128-core CPU. And believe it or not, it actually beats a dual Xeon 8490H, which is Intel's highest-end Sapphire Rapids chip. Oh, and a single one of those Intel chips is $5,000 more than Bergamo. So you're essentially getting a faster chip and saving 10 grand. Now, you might be thinking, but gamer meld, the Bergamo CPU has more cores than two of Intel Xeon chips. And you'd be right, random user I made up. But don't forget that Bergamo uses AMD's new Zen 4C cores, which is AMD's version of little cores, while the Xeon chip is Intel's best stuff. Plus, Bergamo doesn't just sort of beat Intel, it pummels them by by an unbelievable 42%. And this brings me to a very good question. Why? For one, they are different architectures, of course, but Intel and AMD are fairly close in the consumer market. So what's happening here? Well, I'd argue there's one major reason. Power draw. It's a well-known fact at this point that Intel CPUs consume way more power than AMD's. The spec sheet may not look like it when you see base power draw, but when you look at the base clocks, you'll see that as you go higher up in the product stack, the frequency is lower. They only go higher with boost clocks. That way they can pretend it's all the same. The issue for Intel is that the higher the core count gets, the harder it is to hide this, especially given power draw is way more important in the server market. That's why AMD's Epic 
Lake Genoa is able to get much higher clocks with way more cores, yet only 10 watts higher power draw. We're talking with 36 more cores, the base clock for AMD is 2.4 GHz, while Intel's is 1.9. So even when we move down to AMD's little cores, their base clocks are still higher. Of course, this is only one benchmark, but it likely represents most high core count compute workloads. The one area Intel tends to win in is AI, though their CPUs are far more expensive, have fewer cores, less memory channels, and more. So it's still not always the best option. Plus, most will want to use GPUs for AI, so it's really not looking so good for Intel, especially if AMD incorporates these into Ryzen. And lastly for today, AMD's next GPU is finally on the way. If you remember in my last video, I went over the fact that AMD accidentally showed off their Navi32 GPU, which would likely come as their RX 7800 or 7800 XT. Well, it looks like at least one of the 7800 series cards is in fact coming. In a new filing by ASRock at the EEC, we can see that they filed for an RX 7800 XT. That's right, AMD is apparently planning to release their lower end 7000 card, or at least ASRock seems to think so. Not only that, but this confirms that it comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And while that isn't more than the 6800 XT, it'll likely compete with Nvidia's 4070. So it's still more. One thing I'm curious about is whether it's built on Navi32 or Navi31. The W7800 was built on a cut down Navi31 GPU, so it has 70 CUs. But the rumor Navi32 only has 60. And if it's 60, then performance could be terrible, given the simulated performance from the W6800 wasn't all that great. Either way, it's looking like AMD's next GPU is finally on the way. Let's just hope it comes at the right price. So while that does it for today, is the 7800 XT making you excited? And what do you think about AMD's new little cores? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to customize your new GPU with PowerColor's new Devil Skins. Those are in the description below. And as always, have a great day.